In this lecture, I continue the discussion of dynamic memory allocation. I will introduce the power of two methods with the buddy system and coalescence for allocating memory to processes. Then I will introduce slab allocation, which is used within the kernel to allocate kernel data structures efficiently. In the previous lecture, I introduced the classic algorithms for memory allocation, best fit, worst fit, first fit, and next fit. Now I want to introduce algorithms that are actually used within OS kernels to perform memory allocations efficiently. These algorithms are called power of two methods, and they work by maintaining information about allocated and free blocks in a binary tree instead of a list. At the top level, memory is divided into large blocks called superblocks. As processes request memory, these superblocks are divided into smaller subblocks from which the memory is allocated. Subblocks can be further divided, creating a hierarchy of block sizes. Algorithms based on this method are relatively fast and scale to multiple parallel CPU cores. These algorithms also reduce external fragmentation by coalescing free blocks, as I will discuss in a few moments. Some internal fragmentation does still occur, however. In this diagram, we can see three superblocks, two of which are partially in use. Each of the first two superblocks has been divided into three subblocks, and the third subblock of the first superblock has been further divided. When a process requests memory, the kernel must perform a search of the tree to find an appropriately sized block to handle the request. In performing this search, the kernel might subdivide an existing block into a smaller block to reduce the amount of internal fragmentation. Since this is a search process, a reasonably powerful CPU is required to make this operation efficient. Another improvement to memory management is to utilize a buddy system in the power of two strategy. In this allocation system, two limits are chosen to be powers of two, the upper limit u and the lower limit l. The super blocks are the blocks of size u and these blocks can be subdivided into blocks as small as L bytes. There are trade-offs in picking the size to use for L. A smaller size produces less internal fragmentation, since the block size more closely matches the smallest request sizes from the processes. However, a smaller size for L means that there are more total blocks to be tracked, which increases the size of the binary tree, using more RAM to store the tree and increasing the search time. On the other hand, a larger size for L reduces the search time and makes the tree smaller, but the amount of internal fragmentation increases. In addition to the block size limits, the buddy system also uses a technique called coalescence. Whenever a process frees a block, the kernel checks to see if either neighboring blocks is free also. If one or more neighbors, or buddy blocks, are free, the block is coalesced into a larger block, reducing external fragmentation. The coalescence algorithm is efficient since the maximum number of coalescence operations that must be performed is equal to the base 2 logarithm of u divided by l. By properties of logarithms, this value is equivalent to the base 2 log of u minus the base 2 log of l. Thus, for example, a system with a maximum block size u of 4096 bytes or 2 to the 12, and a minimum block size of 512 bytes, or 2 to the 9, will require at most three coalescence operations to recreate the superblock. Returning a single 512 byte block whose neighboring 512 byte buddy is free will cause the two blocks to be coalesced into a single 1024 byte block. If the neighboring 1024 byte block is free, the two 1024 byte blocks will be coalesced into a 2048 byte block. Then, if a buddy 2048 byte block is free, the third coalescence will produce a 4096 byte superblock. The power of two methods are useful for allocating memory to processes, where some internal fragmentation is acceptable. However, within the kernel, it is preferable to minimize both internal and external fragmentation to avoid wasting space. This conservative approach is needed since the kernel is always mapped into main memory. An efficient solution for allocating kernel memory is to use a slab allocation algorithm in which kernel memory is arranged into fixed size slabs. 
Each slab is divided into regions sized for specific types of kernel objects, including file descriptors, semaphores, process control structures, and other internal data structures. Initial layout of these slabs is performed at compile time. At runtime, several of each of the different slab layouts are pre-allocated into caches. Whenever the kernel requires a new data structure, space for the data structure is simply taken from the slab cache. If the slab cache starts to run out of a certain slab layout, it automatically provisions extras. Graphically, slabs can be represented in a manner shown here. In this example, we have two pre-allocated copies of the same slab layout, in which each slab can hold a single instance of each of five different kernel objects. Some wasted memory does occur with this arrangement, since there might be a larger number of one type of object than of another type of object. However, this approach is generally more efficient in terms of kernel space utilization. Slab allocation does require more CPU power than does a classical method, such as first fit. Thus, in some embedded environments, the slab allocator might be preferable. If slab allocation is chosen over the slab allocator, the Linux kernel has two choices of slab allocator. The first choice is the original slab allocator, which was the default allocator until kernel version 2.6.23. This allocator performed well on shared memory systems with few CPU cores, but wasted considerable memory space when used on extremely large shared memory systems, such as those found in graphics rendering farms. To reduce the space waste on large-scale SMA systems, Christoph Lameter at Silicon Graphics developed a new allocator called SLUB, which reduces the size of data structures needed to track allocated and free objects. The initial implementation of the SLUB allocator contained a performance bug that affected the results of certain memory benchmarking tools. Initially, Christoph believed the bug was of little importance since the conditions required to trigger it were fairly uncommon in practice. However, Linus informed Kristoff that either the problem would be fixed or SLUB would be dropped entirely from the kernel. In the end, it was determined that the bug was caused by adding partially used slabs to the beginning of a linked list instead of to the end of that list. The fix was a change to one line of code, and the SLUB allocator has been the default Linux allocator since 2.6.23.